And our experience has been the data persuades business people pretty quickly. If you walk into a conversation where you're asking for budget and you can show your CFO the median spread of your FTEs and your compliance team, that's one of the ways that you're going to wind up being able to make the case that you need to, to add somebody to the house. Welcome to the Innovation and Compliance Podcast, part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Join us every week as we talk with industry innovators who are making compliance to help business run more efficiently and at the end of the day, more profitably. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and we have a special episode today because we're talking about something very special. I have back with me one of my favorite people in compliance, Erica Salmonburn. And she's going to talk about something called the SPEAR, which I believe was announced by Ethisphere on the day of this recording, although this recording may post a day or two later. So Erica, first of all, welcome back and tell me why you're so excited and your colleagues are so excited about the SPEAR. Thanks, Tom. And thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's a big day here at Ethisphere. You know, for those of you who were with us for the Global Ethics Summit that we hosted earlier in April, you heard us talk a little bit about the sphere then, but this is launch day, particularly for the all access level of the sphere. So what is the sphere and why are we so excited about it? As Tom, your regular listeners know, because you're kind enough to have me on the podcast with some regularity, we've been collecting data on the programmatic practices of companies for about 15 years now. So that we do that primarily through our questionnaire, the ethics quotient, which is the set of about 210 questions that we ask companies every year to think through the kind of practices that they have, either because they'd like to be considered for world's most ethical companies or because they're interested in benchmarking their practices. So for over the course of the last decade or so, we were getting a lot of questions from the companies that we work with about what the data said. And we would share that sometimes in thought leadership pieces or people could, would reach out to us and ask direct questions about the data. And so we realized there was a real appetite in the compliance space for solid benchmarking. And we started about a year and a half ago to build out the capability to what we now call democratize our data access. So with a subscription to the sphere, you can do the following. You can log in, you can select the particular topic that you are interested in getting data on. So let's say hypothetically speaking, you're a, a member of the compliance team and your chief compliance officer comes out of the audit committee meeting and says, hey, travel is starting to open up again a little bit and people are starting to think about entertaining again it's probably time for us to refresh our gifts and entertainment process. Will you go find out what other companies are doing in terms of how they manage disclosures and how they manage approvals and what kind of functionality their tracking tool has? If you have a subscription to the sphere, you can log in and you can pull those questions, right? And you can get data right at your fingertips in that moment. You can sort that data by industry. You can sort that data by headcount and you can get a sense of what other companies with strong programs are doing around those critical issues. But we didn't stop there, Tom, and this is the reason why I'm so excited that this is finally out in the world. We added a lot of different cross-references to those data pieces. So you'll not only see the data in the sphere, you're also going to see cross-references to applicable regulatory guidance. So if the DOJ has spoken on an issue or the SEC has spoken on an issue, we're going to refer you to that specific guidance in the sphere. You're also going to see our thoughts on the questions. I think, Tom, I was making this joke to you. The last time we spoke, I did the math on the number of years that my team at Ethisphere has spent in the ethics and compliance space, and we are older than the United States, if you add us all together. So, you know, we spent the last six months really thinking through and pulling out of our heads the why behind the questions. Why are we asking the question the way we're asking it? What are we looking for in terms of the good answers? So you have that advice right there. It's called Ethisphere Insights. And it's built right into the sphere. And then if there's other resources that we think would be helpful on a given issue, we cross-reference those as well. So really opening up the expertise of the team and our data to compliance and ethics professionals, no matter where in the world they're located. You don't have to come through us. You don't have to ask a question. It can be two in the morning in the United States and you're in Singapore and you can get your question answered right away. So we're really tasked to bring this forward. You know, Erica, we probably should have started with the following question, but I want to step back and ask, why do you or Ethisphere find that peer data is not only so important, but so powerful for a CCO or other compliance professional to utilize inside their organization? It's a great question. It's a good clarifying point because 
We see it as being incredibly powerful for two reasons. One, if you're trying to make the case for change, the first question you're going to get asked by your CFO, if you're asking for budget, by your business unit leaders, if you're asking for them to you know, communicate particular messaging, whatever the case may be, the first question you're going to get asked is, well, what are other people doing? Is anybody else doing this? Or are you asking us to do something that is totally outside of the norm? So that's one piece of it. If you end up in front of the government, you're certainly going to get asked to the extent to which you wound up comparing what you were doing to peers. There's a lot of comparative practices in that regard. My colleague, Andrew Neblett, likes to call it not being the weak antelope. So you don't necessarily want to be the one up at the front of the pack that's got a practice that is way advanced compared to everybody else, but you certainly don't want to be the weak antelope because you're going to get picked off. So how do you know that you're in the middle of the pack? Well, you do that by benchmarking. And you can do that informally through peer networks if you've got the right networks and people are connected with you, or you can do that formally with more formally with data. And our experience has been that data persuades business people pretty quickly. If you walk into a conversation where you're asking for budget, and you can show your CFO the median spread of your FTEs and your compliance team, that's one of the ways that you're going to wind up being able to make the case that you need to, to add somebody to the house. And I know you spoke to these a little bit earlier, but I wanted to reiterate, this is not simply peer data. You've cross-referenced additional resources. You specifically mm-hmm. mentioned DOJ, SEC guidelines. Uh, I'm going to assume that it could include speeches or other communications Mm -hmm. that they publicly make with the compliance community, but it's also commentary. It's ethosphere commentary. It's guest commentary through the ethosphere channels. So it's really a comprehensive resource for the compliance practitioner, literally from the compliance profession by Mm -hmm. everyone that ethosphere touches and interacts with so that The power of the data from the peer data, I would posit, is exponentially made greater because of the additional resources that you make available through the sphere. Yeah, that's exactly right, Tom. So as one example, you know, we've had a lot of companies asking us questions about how to more appropriately and effectively engage managers on compliance messaging. And so if you look at that section of the sphere, you'll see questions on manager toolkits, what's in them, how do you follow up on them, how do you make sure people are using them. Crossed with GES sessions, we did a great session at the Global Ethics Summit in April on psychological safety and the five stages and how to use the concept of psychological safety effectively inside your organization. And from an outside speaker, you'll see pieces that we've written on that. Part of the reason why we called it the sphere is because it is the compilation of 15 years worth of Ethosphere's existence into a place that people can enter at any point. So that was sort of the driving force behind calling it the sphere in the first place. And the idea is basically how at whatever question it is that you need, you can start there. Chances are you'll be able to end there. And then if you still need something else, all of our people are still here. So it's just, it's an expanded way of being able to access the expertise that we have built and the networks that we have created over the course of the years that we've been in the space. Well, Erica, this is really an exciting development. I can't wait to see not only what it is and what it does, but frankly, where you guys take this because you never stand still. You're always improving and moving things forward. Before we leave, could I ask where people could go for more information on the sphere? Mm -hmm. So if you go to our homepage at the sphere.com, E-T-H-I-P-S-P-H-E-R-E.com, you will see that it's now the landing page is the whole, you know, sort of all the information on the sphere. You can see a short demo there that my colleague Tyler Lawrence ran at the Global Ethics Summit, kind of showing how it works and what the power of the data looks like. Then you can get more information if your company is interested in being able to utilize it and get information there as well. So straight to the landing page of the homepage of our website, and you'll get all the details and more. Erica, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Tom. Really appreciate it. If you want to stay up to date on the latest innovations in compliance and help your business run more efficiently, subscribe to this podcast and help spread the word by leaving a review.